So I was in DC with a group um, called the Center for Self Governance, and uh, we went back to DC because there are some issues going on. And one of the things that we're seeing is we are seeing a weaponization of our government being utilized. How many of you have been called a uh, homophobe or a white supremacist or a Christian nationalist or any, a racist or a Nazi or whatever the case may be? Raise your hand. I, I, I don't know how many times now uh, I've been called one of those things. It's on a daily basis, I think. And, and that's fine. But we're seeing what's happening is that it's being utilized against Americans. And so we went back to speak uh, with Jim Jordan's committee. Uh, Jim Jordan was appointed to um, uh, oversee the Weaponization of Government and Terrorism Committee. And it's a great committee. There's some, it's a bipartisan committee, and there's some amazing uh, senators and congressmen that are participating in, in committees like this. And so we went back to talk to as many as we could in regards to weaponization of government. And, uh, you know, some of, some of the meetings that we had were with the actual members of the committee, and some of them were with their staff. And their staff is actually pretty knowledgeable. Uh, in fact, there was a few times talking to the staff was actually a, a better route to take than talking to, to the actual member. Uh, because they're very in tune to what's going on so that they can give input to uh, the Congress member. And, uh, and so we, we presented them with information. Uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center, if you've heard of them, they're a wonderful organization, I <laughs> tell you. Uh, they're a fan of mine. They write about me every once in a while. In fact, I'm the second most extremist legislator in, this, in the United States right now. <laughs> Uh, and the reason that it's a problem is because, again, these labels, and I call it label lynching, these labels can have um, terrible consequences and ramifications. Uh, they use these terms to try to pull you down, to silence you. Uh, they'll utilize it against your business, against your family, against your, your memberships and whatever it may be, uh, to try to label you as something so that people don't want anything to do with you anymore. And so, uh, but what we're finding is that our government, uh, there's two types of lists that you can get on that have been congressionally approved. That is a no-fly list and a terrorism watch list. Those are the only two that Congress has approved. But what we're finding is that the Southern Poverty Law Center and other organizations also have lists that they've created. And our government organizations are utilizing these lists. For example, one of the affidavits that we gave the members that we spoke to was a gal that works for TSA. And uh, she had to make a call when she had someone that was coming through the, the airport. And so she, uh, their, they, their, their uh, name was flagged. So it's called a 4S. If you have four S's, then you go through a, basically a four hour process to be able to get on the airplane. It's kind of a, kind of a pain. Um, and so they're, they're, they were flagged coming through, and so she made the call to the head of the TSA that they're supposed to contact when this sort of thing happens, and wanted to you know, double check to make sure that they're on the list and, and what the reason was and if they could give them approval to get on the plane or not. And they said, well, we don't see anything here, but we need to, we need to look at the Southern Poverty Law Center's list and see if they're on this one. And so we have that affidavit statement saying that that is what was transpiring. Another example is that uh, a gentleman who was at, at the J6, um, uh, he has not been convicted, nor has he been tried, nor has he been jailed, nor has he been sentenced. He's still out free, all of that sort of stuff. Nothing has happened to him, but he was at J6. And uh, he was pulled over um, for a traffic violation. And in the report, because uh, they had a court case that, that transpired and there was discovery that happened in that, this is one of the papers that was in the discovery, it says in the report that this gentleman may be on a terrorist watch list, but do not let him know that he is. That was one thing that was in this police report. So we're seeing these things happening and where NGOs, um, non-governmental organizations, are creating lists and our government organizations are utilizing those lists. And that's why this is becoming a problem. Uh, because first of all, how do you get on the list? Who knows? How do you get off the list? Who knows? 
what lists are they even using and who got to put the names on the list and what definitions are they going by? Well, who knows? So it's creating quite the problem within our society and within the things that we see going around. So we had two days of, of a lot of meetings. They were really good meetings. Um, we're ho we met with Jim Jordan's um, uh, attorneys that he has that advise him on, on the legalities of things for this committee. And so it was a great opportunity.